Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, what's up? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell. So today we're going to be discussing some of the nail diseases and disorders and the difference between the two that you might come in contact with as a nail tech. If you missed the video on nail anatomy, I'll leave a link above so you understand some of the terminology. But let's get started with nail education 101 right now. So first, let's talk about the difference between nail diseases versus nail disorders. So nail disorders are conditions that are caused by injury or disease. Most clients will experience one or more of these common disorders at some point in their lifetime. And just remember that these disorders can be treated by you in a nail salon. We just want to tell the clients they have a disorder and refer them to a doctor if needed. And you can provide services cosmetically to improve the appearance of the condition if it is not medical. When it comes to nail diseases, these are a little bit different. Nail diseases are when the nails show signs of infection or inflammation, like redness, pain, swelling, or pus, and they must seek the attention of a medical professional and any treatments will be determined by a physician. These diseases are usually not treated by us as nail techs in a nail salon and should be avoided and then referred to a doctor so they can seek treatment if needed. over some of the types of nail disorders that you will come in contact with as a nail tech. The first one would be a bruised nail. Bruised nails are simply a condition in which a blood clot forms underneath the nail plate forming a dark spot. This is usually caused by a small injury to the nail bed. This condition can be covered with nail polish or any type of enhancement. We just want to be mindful that there's no physical blood while we're performing the service. Another type of nail disorder you'll come in contact with are called eggshell nails. These are thin white nail plates that are usually noticeably more flexible than normal. This is caused by improper diet or hereditary factors, internal disease, or certain medications that the client might be taking. To treat this type of nail, we want to use a very fine nail file, like a 240 or higher, to file gently if needed. And a thin protective overlay enhancement might be able to help the client as long as it does not pass the free edge. Another type of disorder, which you probably wouldn't think is a disorder, is simply a hangnail, or what we call an agnail. This is when the living skin around the nail plate splits and tears. Dryness of the skin or cutting of this living tissue is a result of hangnails. Hangnails can be carefully trimmed as long as the living skin is not cut and won't tear the client's skin. And always, always remember, guys, that it is against most state boards to intentionally cut or tear a client's skin, and that can lead to serious infection. This is why it's high Highly important to know the difference between the cuticle and your epinychium. The next one we have is called leukonychia spots. These are white discoloration spots on the nails. This is usually caused by an injury to the nail matrix. It is a false myth that to think that this is caused by a lack of any vitamin or mineral deficiency. They can continue to appear frequently in some nails, but it doesn't mean that it's a nail disease. As long as the nail grows out normally, the spots might eventually and can eventually disappear. The next one we have is called melanoconychia. This is something that you might actually even see in yourself. It's simply just a darkening of fingernails and toenails. It appears as a black band within the nail, or sometimes it could be the entire nail. All it is is an increase in pigmented cells within the matrix that is responsible for this condition. It is fairly common and normal in most African-Americans, but it can be a sign of disease if you notice it on someone who is Caucasian. Next up, we have anechorexis. This is a split or brittle nail that has a series of ridges giving it a rough appearance to the surface of the nail. This can be caused by injury to the matrix, harsh cleaning products, aggressive nail filing, or even hereditary causes. Nail enhancements should not be applied if the nail bed is exposed. Just advise your clients by offering some type of conditioning treatment, some type of moisturization, discontinue their use of cleaning agents if they're using, and Try to do proper nail filing to help them out. Next, we have plicotort nails. 
This is when the nail is highly curved and is often caused by injury to the matrix, but it may be inherited. This can often lead to ingrown nails. This is something that you would probably notice a lot in maybe someone who's older and you would notice on their toenails. If the problem is severe, advise the client to seek help from a medical professional like a podiatrist. We should not be digging too much into someone's nails as a nail technician. Next, we have ridges. Ridges run vertically down the nail lengthwise on the nail plate, and they are caused by uneven growth of the nails. This can mainly be from aging. When we're dealing with these type of clients, we want to be careful when we're buffing the nail plate to minimize the appearance. Over filing can lead to nail plate weakness. And also you can use rich filler, which is less damaging and can also be used as a base coat to help reduce the appearance while keeping the nails strong and healthy. Hey, let's talk about trumpet nails. This is when the nails curl upon itself. Again, this is something you will see most likely in someone who's a little bit older in age and also on someone's toenails. This is just when the nail plates have a deep or sharp curve at the free edge because of the matrix. It can range from mild to severe. The natural nail plate should be carefully trimmed and filed. But remember, extreme cases should not be handled by us. We should refer them to a physician or a podiatrist for help. Let's talk about some of the types of nail diseases. First up, we have onychocryptosis or ingrown nails. This can affect either the fingers or the toes. The nail grows into the sides of the tissue around the nail. Movements of walking can easily cause problems for the client. If the tissue around the nail is not infected, we can carefully trim the corners and curve them out to relieve some pressure. Again, remember that a nail technician is not allowed to service ingrown nails. If you do, it's a choice, but we wanna refer them to a physician have onycholysis. This is lifting of the nail plate from the bed with shedding. This is usually beginning at the free edge. This is often a result from trauma, allergic reaction of the nail bed, or just a health disorder. This occurs when the natural nails are filed too often, enhancements are improperly removed, or client shoes do not have sufficient room to breathe. A basic manicure pedicure can be performed if there is no sign of infection. Eventually, the nail plate will grow off and the hypendicheum will reform, so it will have that seal of barrier to help with infection. Next, we have nail psoriasis. This is causing tiny pits or severe roughness on the surface of the nail plate. Sometimes they will appear in evenly spaced rows. People that normally have skin psoriasis will often experience this, and it is not an infectious disease. Clients should be referred to a physician for a proper diagnosis and treatment. Remember that it is not in a nail technician's scope of practice to diagnose any client ever. Next, we have paronychia. This is a bacterial inflammation of the tissue surrounding the nail. Redness, pus, and swelling are usually seen in the skin fold next to the nail plate. People who work with their hands in water or wash their hands continually are more susceptible to this. Please advise your clients to moisturize their hands and keep feet clean and dry, and that will help avoid this disease. The next nail disease is something that you might commonly have heard of. It is athlete's foot, or medically we call tinea pettis. It's the medical term for a fungal infection of the feet. These occur at the bottom of the feet and often appear as red itchy rashes in the spaces in between the toes. Clients should be advised to wash and dry their feet daily to avoid the infection from spreading. Also avoid wearing the same shoes and socks every day as this can lead to spreading. Over-the-counter antifungal medication or powders can help in speed up healing. If you notice that that doesn't help, refer them to a doctor. And lastly, we have onychomycosis. This is a fungal infection of the nail plate. The nail might appear to form white patches that can be scraped off or long whitish or yellowish streaks within the nail plate, or you might notice the free edge crumbles and it can affect the entire nail plate. Clients should seek proper diagnosis and treatment from a physician, and we should not be performing any services on this type of nail. That's it for the diseases and disorders. If you guys have any other questions about any nail diseases or disorders, please leave me a comment below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.